share it with someone whose DMs you just want to slide into. We qualified for the Bass Pro Tour. So that's exciting. We're, we're going to be fishing a new circuit next year. Yeah, maybe when you uh, are sitting there idling, waiting to take off, and you look over to your left and you see KVD, and you look over to your right and you see a bunch of these other guys that, yeah. that uh, maybe that's when it hits, huh? Every single other sport in the world, you know what your opponent has. Like, you know what the score of the game is. You know what whatever it may be. So you get to see the best in the game make adjustments according to the situation. What are your thoughts about live electronics in terms of those who say they should not be used in tournaments yeah well i mean i feel like they're just being a little stubborn and uh th don't want any change you know Live vest zipping clips, strap down those rods, and stow away those tackle bags because we are going fishing. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Bass to Anglers podcast. I'm your host, Keith Nicewanger, and I hope this episode finds you with five for 25 that have been thermal scanned, x rayed, and internally scoped, proving that you did not cheat. <laughs> what are we going to do? Special thanks to our partners who make this podcast possible. Basco Fishing is the official wardrobe sponsor of the Bass to Anglers podcast. Today, I am wearing the Solar Orange SPF hooded sun shirt. Be sure to check out all the colors and all the styles by going to their website, BascoFishing.com. By now, you know we are the Western representatives for ducket fishing, pro-driven rods, reels, and baits. You know these guys, the strongest pro staff in all professional tournament fishing. It is these same pros that put their ingenuity and their ideas into the products that ducket fishing produces. 
Duggett is building a Western presence, and if you haven't seen it yet, you soon will. New independent dealerships are popping up all the time. Find out about the Duckett lineup of pro-driven rods, reels, and baits by going to their website, DuckettFishing.com. Matt Becker is going to fish Major League Fishing's Bass Pro Tour for the 2023 season, and today he joins us on our podcast to talk about what that means for him. But first, if you like the content we produce, hit the subscribe button, like this video. They tell me that that's supposed to, to do something special for the channel. If you like what we do, hit the subscribe button, leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from our, our viewers. Subscribe, like, comment. That's what you got to do. In fact, let's get on that right now. Hit the subscribe button. I'll play a little guitar for you. Let's go. Subscribe. Thank you. Share this podcast with a friend. Share it with another podcast host. I think you know who I'm talking about. Share it with someone whose DMs you just want to slide into. Good excuse, right? As always, leave us a comment and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. How many times are you going to tell us that? I guess as many times as it takes. We just hit our 400th subscriber this week. Very excited about that. Let's see if we can get those numbers up. Our guest today qualified this season to fish the Bass Pro Tour for 2023. He was Major League Fishing's Pro Circuit Rookie of the Year in 2018. He won a tour event at Lake Murray in 2021. You know he's a busy guy because he finished the 2022 season as the number seven angler in the Bass to Anglers Podcast Angler of the Year. Matt Becker, welcome back to the Bass to Anglers Podcast. Thanks for being with us today. Oh, thanks for having me. You know, I'm I'm always down to talk fishing anytime, so always just a phone call away, but appreciate you having me. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there's a lot of big changes for Matt Becker fishing in 2023, right? Um, yeah, it, a lot of changes going on in in uh the the fall of the year, I guess you could say. I mean, I guess the the big one is uh we qualified for the Bass Pro Tour. So that's exciting. We're, we're going to be fishing a new circuit next year. Um, kind of going along with that is I felt it was the time in my career that I needed to make a move south to more central in the country. So I made a move to uh, East Tennessee, a little south of Knoxville area, um, just to get more central to all, most of the tournaments. You know, I think I'm within like a, a six or seven hour drive of the majority of the tournaments coming up next year. So I'm pretty excited about that. You know, I'll be able to come home more, shorten up my drives. And it's just a great part of the country to, to learn more about fishing and kind of grow as an angler. So I just felt like that was the next step in my career. So that's been going on here this fall, working on that, you know, building a garage for myself and just a lot of things going on here in the fall. So it's been busy for sure. You know, you know, I always think about moving moving uh it's like oh it's that one thing you don't want to ever have to do but i've uh, been following your youtube channel and you've got you've got a, a a new uh i guess we i guess we call these shops now these are not just garages these are these are fishing shops that you're building right yeah i don't know what the difference in the term is you know to me it's a garage is a metal building garage is what the company that i bought it from called it so to me it's a garage but yeah i finally you know, I've never had a, a place for my boat my whole life. So I'm super excited to have that for my boat. All my tackle have everything in one place under the under a roof, you know, heated, cold, all that good stuff right under there. So I can go out and hang out, work on tackle, 
watch fishing shows, listen to podcasts, do all that in one place, just the all around man cave hangout, ultimate fishing shop. I am so excited about that. You know, one of one of my favorite videos to watch is when these guys, you guys, take us through your shop because I think, I think, I think that's when you when you when you have uh, when you know you've arrived when you have uh, and it's it's not just a garage. A garage is what you park your car in. A shop is where you put your boat and everything, and it's always very cool. So we'll be we'll be getting a tour here pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm I'm working on the finishing touches now. You know, I just uh, ran some electrical work this weekend, so just getting all that squared away, and uh, you know, getting everything hung up and organized. And yes, I definitely plan on doing a tour for my YouTube channel. You know, I uh, it, it's almost like my way of uh, just appreciating it, and I want to share it with others. You know, because I know I'm. Uh, I'm very blessed to have it, so I want I want to uh, share that and and you know kind of give ideas to other people who may be looking to build a a boat shop or or man cave, whatever you want to call it, um, just to kind of see how I did it and you know different little tips and tricks that I learned through the the building process. But yeah, once I get it finished up, hopefully here within the next month, you know, hopefully by the new year, I'll have that tour video out and uh, we'll go from there. Wardrobe for the Bass True Anglers podcast is brought to you by Basco Fishing. High performance fishing apparel that can be customized to fit your needs. Do you need to showcase your brand? Does your business need apparel? Do you need a tournament jersey? Visit their website at www.bascofishing.com. It's it's been so much fun to watch your your career progress and it seems like it's it's happening fast for you. I, you know, there, there, there is such a struggle. There is such a struggle to rise to the top of the sport, but Bass Pro Tour, I mean, you are there. Does it feel, does it feel like you're there? Does it feel like you are at the sport's highest echelon? Um, You know, that really hasn't sunk in yet. No, Um, to, to me, it's just, you know, going out and catching fish. You know, I try not and look at that and try not to, you know, let that, go to your head or boost your ego or anything because to me at the end of the day it's just about catching fish and whoever catches the most fish whether you're in a bfl or the bass pro tour whoever catches the most or the biggest fish that day is going to win so to me it's all about the fishing i just love the sport i love the sport of fishing so as long as i'm getting paid and, and making a living catching bass or in the <laughs> bass fishing world i am a happy guy so Yes, I'm definitely excited to be at the top of the the sport and be in the Bass Pro Tour, but it really hasn't sunk in that uh, that I'm there yet. You know, I think when we launch the boat in uh, the Kissimmee chain here in February, that it'll finally sink in and things will get rolling pretty quick. Yeah, maybe when you uh, are sitting there idling, waiting to take off, and you look over to your left and you see KVD, and you look over to your right and you see a bunch of these other guys that yeah. that uh, maybe that's when it hits, huh? <laughs> yeah, for sure. That that that'll be the time, or or you know, one of those moments. I'll definitely have one of those moments next year when when I'm fishing next to somebody or or idling out next to somebody, and it, I'll just it'll hit me then and be like, wow, you know, we're actually here. This is actually happening. Because as of now, you know, it still feels like a dream to me. It, it, it's all so fresh and so new, and it hasn't really sunk in yet. A lot of changes on the Bass Pro Tour. Uh, you know, it, it's refreshing to me when an organization listens to its anglers. And, uh, you know, we're finding out more and more about the backstory behind all the changes. And it and it really sounds like the changes have, have been angler, um, have come from the anglers. And I, it, it's kind of neat. Well, what are your thoughts about the changes at uh, for the Bass Pro Tour? So I assume you're referring to the scoring rules. Yes, yes. Changing from every fish counts to five fish. Um, so I kind of have mixed feelings on it. You know, selfishly, I would have liked to keep it at the every fish counts format just because I really haven't experienced it and I thought it'd be a lot of fun. And I feel like my style would have meshed with that very well. But on the other hand, like I definitely understand the need for the change. Um, it's just hard for the fans to relate. And at the end of the day, we want a solid path from high school, college, BFL, Toyota, 
invitationals to the Bass Pro Tour, and we need all of those to be the same. So we're going to have five fish throughout all of those. So I understand the need for the change. Um, it's it's definitely going to make things interesting. I like the idea of uh, knowing what's going on. Yeah. You know, I feel like I don't know how we could implement it in every other league, but I would love to see that implemented at some point because every single other sport in the world – you know what your opponent has. Like, you know what the score of the game is. You know what whatever it may be. So you get to see the best in the game make adjustments according to the situation. And that's what I'm most excited about is just being able to say, hey, you know, we both say I'm in uh, whatever the cut line will be, 20th place. Right. Say I'm in, you know, 22nd, and I need to catch a three-and-a-half pounder to call to get to that cut line. I want to be able to make the adjustments. You know, if I'm only catching two pounders or something, I need to catch a three and a half. I want to be able to know that and make that adjustment and then try and, uh, you know, catch that fish and move on. So I'm really excited about that. I think it'll be very um, exciting around the cut line. You know, it's going to put emphasis on big fish a lot more than previously. So you're going to see guys try different things, you know, big swim baits, glide baits, big jigs, that kind of stuff is going to play a lot more this coming year than in previous years. You know, I, I'm, I'm right with you. I, I was, I am such a fan of the every fish counts um, format, but I think what you just hit on some really important things because uh, you know, there hasn't been, you know, the, the motivation has been to keep catching fish, keep catching them. But I like I agree with you. I think that uh, when you're getting, especially getting close to that that cut time, we might see a lot more glide bait fishing. We might see a lot more, you know, going for the big one. And yeah, it's not what we want to see as fans, you know. Yeah, for sure. You know, everyone loves seeing big fish. Yeah. Um, I really don't care if they're big or small, as long as they bite my cricket. I'm setting the hook and reeling them in, and I'm happy. So I just like catching fish. But that's why, selfishly, I would have loved to see it to stay at every fish. But I understand it, and really, that's all I've ever fished throughout my entire career. So it's just going to be a, a easy transition into the Bass Pro Tour. It's not going to be a big change. It's, you know, it's going to be just the same as it's always been for me. So yeah. that's kind of a, a benefit for me, I guess. Yeah, well, again, you know, uh, hats off to the organization for for listening to to the pros. Um, the, the, the thing, one of the comments I heard that was very good is that it's almost an impossible format that every fish counts to transfer anywhere else. I mean, you're right. High schools can't do that. College can't do that because there just isn't the technology is is, is too difficult. Yeah, and, and, you know, really it comes down to having to have the official in the boat to make yes. things fair because – you know, when, whenever you're weighing your fish on your boat, you know, anybody could do anything out there. You know, you don't want to go down that path, but right. it could definitely happen that way a lot easier than when you have to bring in your fish and weigh them in. So yeah. the uh, the official in the boat was kind of the big hang up there, I believe. And uh, yeah, I, I think it'll relate better to the fans, to the general public and uh, should be a good, good change. I've I really wanted to talk to you about this next topic, you know, the whole the whole world of live electronics. I mean, when we first talked a couple of years ago, I know that live electronics was was important, but I don't think there was the there was the controversy and drama surrounding it that there is now. Uh you obviously have adapted that to your fishing. Um what are your thoughts about live electronics in terms of those who say they should not be used in tournaments? Yeah, well, I mean, I feel like they're just being a little stubborn and uh, th don't want any change. You know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how many fish I see on my live scope. You can't make them bite. They still have to want to bite your bait or you still have to trick them into biting your bait. So, you know, if you look at the standings in in the tournaments, the same guys are going to win with live scope, without live scope, with an Alabama rig, with an out, without an Alabama rig. I mean, it's the same situation. Um, so the the top level of the sport, the top guys are going to get good at and figure out and be the best at 
whatever is available. So as long as live scope is available or forward facing sonar is available to the tournament anglers, you absolutely have to use it and you have to put in the time and get good at it because there's certain situations where you have to, you have to use it when those fish suspend or they're out chasing bait, stuff like that. You have to have it or you're just going to get left in the dust. Now, granted, there's other times where you got to turn it off. Like, and the good anglers realize that and know those situations and they turn that power off and don't even look at it. But there's definitely times where you need to be using it. And there's definitely times where you don't need to be using it. You need to turn it off and just totally ignore it. And uh, it's up to you, the angler, to determine that and, you know, figure that out. And then, like I said, go back to the beginning where once you see a fish it's not like you're throwing a net on him and he's jumping in the boat he still has to bite your bait so you still have to you know mess around with different baits and techniques and retrieves all that kind of stuff to get that fish to bite absolutely now you know one thing i can agree with for those that are critical of live scope is that it doesn't necessarily make for the best viewing because bass fishing has become a spectator sport it is really a spectator sport with the cameras and the boat and all of that and it's not that exciting necessarily to watch but i think the organizations can adjust for that by putting some of the events on on waters where there are not going to be a lot of you know offshore stuff the bpt tour this year seems like it's got a really good mix of events that will be non non live electronics and some that will be what are your thoughts about the new schedule yeah the schedule for 23 looks awesome um you know a lot of great lakes at great times and i agree i, I don't think forward facing sonar will play a big role in in the majority of them it definitely will in a few of them but definitely not the majority of them you know we're going to hit the spawn in a few of them so there'll be some a lot of shallow fish caught and then Anytime you get up north into the, the smallmouth country, of course, it's going to play. So, yeah, I mean, it's good. It's a great schedule. I'm excited about it. I was pumped with every single lake on there. You know, I can't pick a bad lake on that schedule. So I'm super excited and I'm ready to get the roll, the, the season rolling here in February. You know, of course, we are very partial to our Bass to Anglers podcast, Angler of the Year standings, and you are always in that top group top level of that uh top 10 this year um it's because you fish so many different things will you be fishing other other trails other events this year other than just the bpt absolutely you know i am a tournament fisherman so right. if i'm not fishing a tournament i am not working and i'm not making money so <laughs> i am going to fish as many tournaments as i can you know as of now, I uh, I got the Bass Pro Tour that I'm confirmed in. I signed up for uh, four of the invitationals. I didn't want to do the whole season just because there were some other things going on. I wanted to spend some time with family in some of those weeks. So signed up for four of them. I'm not sure if I'm confirmed in those or not yet, but I'm signed up and I paid my deposit. So hopefully we, we get in those four. And then I also signed up for four Toyota Series events, kind of scattered throughout the year. I couldn't make a full division just because of conflicts of schedule. So I signed up for four scattered around the country. And hopefully through those four, I'll be able to make the, the championship in the wildcard division and then uh, fish that Toyota Series championship at the end of the year. So, yeah, we've got a busy schedule, whatever that adds up, 16 tournaments, I think. Now 15, 16 tournaments. So yeah, it's going to be a busy year. That, that's really exciting. Again, I, I, like I said, I, we, we can always count on Matt, Matt Becker to be in just about every event that's coming up. So, you know, just a matter of looking to see where he finished each week. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. You, like I said, I'm a tournament bass fisherman. So why would I not be fishing a tournament whenever it's available? You know, that, that is, uh, that's my job. So if I'm not working, I'm not making any money. So I got to be fishing and, and it just helps you get better and stay sharp. You know, the yeah. more lakes and experience that, that you get, you just grow as an angler and that kind of keeps snowballing and snowballing. And, you know, eventually I might have to slow down and, and not fish as many tournaments as life progresses, but Absolutely. at this point right now I can fish as much as I want. So I'm going for it. 
change. It's inevitable. To improve, you must adapt. The sport is evolving. A paradigm shift is a fundamental change of basic concepts. Don't get left behind. Introducing Paradigm. Paradigm Reels by Ducket Fishing. Pro-driven. You know, Matt, I've always been impressed. You have one of the most impressive lists of sponsors of any of the pros I see on tour today. You've got Bagley Crankbaits, uh, yeah. Epic Baits, Guggen, Favorite Rods and Reels, Striker, on and on and on. How in the world do you manage that sponsor portfolio and do what you do? Well, it's it's a full-time job. You know, I don't do anything else but fish tournaments and then work for sponsors. I create content, you know, whether it's YouTube videos or, or Instagram reels or Instagram posts or commercials for them. You know, it's a constant job of creating content and, you know, playing with social media, that kind of stuff. So that's very important to me. You know, really the, the sponsor side of it is – just as important as catching bass because they, uh, you know, they keep us out there and, and they help us throughout the season, whether it's through product or, or paychecks. So definitely really put a lot of time and focus into keeping them happy and, and making sure I, I check all the boxes that, that they give me at the beginning of the year. Um, kind of a, a teaser here. We're going to have some some changes in the sponsor lineup next year. So there'll be some big things coming with that here soon. That was uh, got some exciting news coming here that I, I can't announce till January, but be some exciting things coming. Well, that's very cool. You know, I, I can only imagine that with the BPT qualification, the the meetings with sponsors now are very interesting. Uh, I, I'm, I'm assuming you've checked in with everybody. Um, give us an idea what those meetings are like. Yeah. Your, your you views know, your views are through the roof now. Definitely. Um, you know, I, I'm on a pretty personal relationship with, with most all the sponsors. So we, we keep in touch, you know, really a couple times a month. Uh, you know, I'll talk with most everybody. So they were all pretty well aware when it happened that I'd qualified for the Bass Pro Tour, but kind of as the fall has progressed, we've had those more business conversations about, you know, fishing the Bass Pro Tour. So it's going to give me more exposure, more impressions, you know, all that kind of stuff. And and everyone's taken it differently. Um, you know, a lot of people just like me doing what I'm doing, social media, you know, working shows, that kind of stuff. And and they really don't care what you fish, whether it's, you yeah. know, Toyota series, you know, invitationals, bass opens, elite series, bass pro tour, they, they really don't care what you fish. They're more interested in you. And then other companies are, are very much concerned about the, the tournament that you fish and they're very happy and, and welcoming to, uh, see me qualify for the Bass Pro Tour. So it, it's kind of been a mix of both, but you kind of mix all that stuff up in and, and kind of please the needs of each sponsor individually. And uh, yeah, it's been some great conversations and uh, excited heading into 2023 for sure. <laughs> that's that's really, really cool. Uh, what about the next couple of months? Uh, are you are, do you hunt like all the other like many of the other pros do, or or are you just you just fish? I don't hunt at all. You know, I might have to get into it because there's uh, been some deer running through my property here in Tennessee, so I might have to get into <laughs> it just just for the freezer. You know, usually yeah. I have a buddy kill me a deer every year and just get it processed so I can you know have some fresh good ground meat and steaks throughout the year and um, that kind of stuff, but. Now that they're running in my backyard, I might have to just uh, get into it a little bit myself and just do it all myself now. <laughs> but no, other than that, I'm just working on the house. You know, this was a this is a brand new house that we bought, so it uh, just so many little things that I never even thought about just to get it, you know, personalized and and how we want it. So it's it's just you know little things here and there and and doing all that. So that's been keeping me busy, but. Hopefully we get all that done by, 
by December and then I can start getting back out on the water and start fishing here till it's time to go for tournament season. You still do all your own editing. Yeah, your your uh, your your YouTube channel is Matt Becker Fishing, right? Yep, that is correct. And yep, it's either me or my girlfriend Brittany that that does all the editing. We do it all ourselves. You know, we uh, we got a couple of different MacBooks and just just sit down and go at it, tag team it, whatever whatever it takes to to get it done. Do you uh with this with this new uh, evolution in your fishing? Do you get to hire a film crew now and, and editors? Or are you going to still keep it simple? No, we're going to keep it simple. It's just going to be me and Brittany running around and, uh, you know, filming it all on GoPros and just editing it up when we get a chance. Yeah, at this point, Brittany still works full time. So yeah. the, the next step in that would be for, for her to walk away from that and, and you know, start working on the, the YouTube full time. But we're, we're kind of a long ways from that. You know, it's uh, it's got to grow exponentially before we can make that happen so everyone out there listening appreciate you if you go subscribe and uh, watch all our content and that'll, that'll help on that evolution for sure <laughs> absolutely absolutely well folks uh well i should say matt thanks for being with us today uh it's always good to catch up with you you know uh when i when i saw you at red crest this last year i i felt like you were you were like in charge of that booth it seemed like you were all over the place and every time I'd walk by it, Matt Becker's in there talking to people about fishing rods. And I, I just, I know that's the kind of thing that, that people like about you uh, is, is just how, how available you are to the public. We appreciate you yeah. being with us today. I appreciate that. You know, that just goes back to uh, the sponsor thing is, you know, I, I'm a hard worker. So whenever uh, somebody asks me to come work a show or whatever, I'm going to be there and I'm going to work as hard as I can and, and try and sell as much product and, you know, talk with fans and, and customers as much as possible. You know, that's what I'm there for. I'm there to talk to them and, and try and guide them into the right product for, for their needs. So it's, uh, I, I love talking fishing. I love talking to fans and, and customers and just everybody in the bass fishing industry. I just love it all. I'm, I'm obsessed with bass fishing. So <laughs> Anytime we're, we're talking fishing, going fishing, working on tackle, I'm a happy camper. So um, I'm just all about bass fishing. So yeah, I appreciate you having me. Love talking fishing anytime. Feel free to reach out anytime time you need uh, need a guest. We'll do. We'll do. Matt, thanks a lot and we'll uh, we'll keep an eye on you this year. Have a nice holiday and, and good luck in this upcoming season. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. It's always fun to catch up with Matt Becker. Matt's one of those pros that has embraced technology. He's all in. Not just the live electronics, but the social media, the YouTube posts. Got a great YouTube channel, Matt Becker Fishing. And all the other things a pro needs to do today to be a pro. I bet when Matt was a young and he never thought he'd need to be a video editor uh, in order to be a bass pro. But uh, there you go. Exposure is what today's bass fishing is all about. And Matt Becker is truly a pro at all facets of the trade. Well, folks, that's going to do it for this episode of the Bass Wranglers podcast. As always, thank you for coming by and viewing, listening to our content. Until next time, keep both hands on the wheel. Keep those live vests zipped and clipped. Subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you again very soon.